Hi there. Afternoon, everyone. Lance Anderson, VP of Sales and Marketing for View6. Thanks for joining me today. Um, heck of a presentation there by Joe. It takes a lot of guts to stand up here and do a demo like that live. Thank you. I was looking for that. <laughs> it takes a lot of guts, or you might you actually have a really, really solid product. So congratulations to those guys. So. Um, We'll actually touch on that here in a little bit. So we take a little spin here, uh, looking for AR, smart glasses, form versus function, where we are right now, where I think we're going in the future, and how I think this affects how and when these types of products and the AR experience in general gets out to the public. Uh, quick safe harbor statement, not gonna read all this, but we are a public company, so rules are rules. Um, so let's start with this. So here I am upstage, looking out on this crowd. Why aren't any of you wearing smart glasses? This is the industry, this is everybody. Nima, you're out there, you wearing yours? Lowry, were you wearing yours? Eric, me, I'm not wearing mine, right? So, so what's going on here? Why aren't we recording this right now, capturing videos? Why are we looking at these screens when they can just be done in AR? You just saw it right in front of your eyes, right? Um, and this is where it really starts. There's a debate between form factor, wearability, fashion, and function. So let's get right into it. Oop, I'm going the wrong way. Okay, um, you know, first thing, we've all seen these numbers. The market is supposed to be in the billions and all this wonderful stuff. Um, yes, obviously it takes into to fact all of the components of the market. Uh, the software, the components, the hardware. But if you look at actual smart glasses, it's a pretty good indicator of, of usage, right? Um, some of our companies were selling in the tens of thousands. There's just a handful selling in the hundreds of thousands of units and no one that I know is selling millions of units. So. Right now, the numbers don't quite add up. And today, I want to ask ourselves why. Right? Is, is it the cost of the devices? I don't know. There were some cheap ones out there, some expensive ones. There's a lot of good ROI. Um, is it a lack of general awareness? I don't know. We see AR everywhere and, every, and anywhere at this point in time. Whether people really know what it is is a different subject, but at least it's out there. So I truly believe it's form and function. Um, so first off, just want to talk a little bit about AR and what we're going to be talking about today and how phones and tablets, honestly, they just don't deliver the experience we're looking for, right? Yes, AR kit, AR core, we, we are really moving the ball forward. Uh, there's 100 million Android devices out there that can do AR with these types of devices. But honestly, I really do believe that the ecosystem is ready for a more natural user experience, a heads up, hands free, immersive AR experience where the hardware disappears. Um, and that's what we're talking about. Right? So where you are heads up, you are part of your environment. When you look through your device, you see your real world and you see the AR and you're not distracted. Texting and driving, phone and AR. This is a whole different experience and why we do believe as View6 and we think a lot of you out there probably agree with us that we really need, need to get these devices on our faces, get ourselves heads up and hands free so that this disappears via in a, in a very, very intuitive UI, and we'll talk a little bit about that. So, let's start a little bit. So it all started like this. Every single one of our companies out there, we have these newfangled, funky looking stuff that we put out there in the beginning, and it, and it was just, it, we had to build something to generate these AR experiences, right? Then we all moved to these different types of smart glasses for enterprise, for personal use, for holograms, for just basic text and all that kind of stuff, but honestly, we're all really looking to get where we are uh, right here on the left of your screen, which is a nice fashionable format. And I really do think that the world is screaming. Whether we're listening or not is quite debatable in terms of the hardware, but the world is screaming. If these devices aren't fashionable, we're not wearing them. The proof is in the, in the sales. Um, so, a lot of great stuff out there. Not picking on anyone. Every, every shot you see is going to at least have one View 6 device in it. So we're in this just as much as everybody else is. And you saw the magical things that Meta just showed you on those stage, and that stuff is awesome. But will you walk down the street in a device like that or in any of these other devices? But possibly you might in the Blade, which is what we're showing you here as well. And if you think I'm stacking the deck with beautiful models, it gets even worse when you put a male model up there. A little self-deprecation always works, <laughs> all right? Honestly here, so uh, just digging in deeply. So the, the, the world we believe is demanding lightweight, ergonomic AR smart glasses. They have to have immersive AR experiences. Again, heads up, hands free. My mind is consciously 
working with the world in front of me and the AR that we're, that we're digitizing around it. The interface has to be intuitive. Can't just be voice. Sometimes you need a button. Sometimes you need a touchpad. Sometimes you need a hand gesture. Whatever feels intuitive at the right interface at the right time is what the world expects because we do believe with AR and once it's immersive that that is our reality. So we expect to touch it, talk to it, feel it, touch it, swipe it, move it, tap it. All that stuff, it all has to be there. And honestly, uh, at least as View 6, we believe an untethered device is very, very important for the world out there. Biking, running, moving. If we're standing in a conference room, yeah, we can have wires and stuff dangling from us. Even this is a little bit bothersome for me with all these wires all over me. Really, an untethered device is something we very, very truly believe in. Um, so View 6 as a company, our mission is to deliver fashionable and wearable devices, lightweight, things that you're comfortable wearing, that you feel good about yourself, that the person on the other side of the device feels good about what you're wearing. Again, they have to disappear. Um, we believe we have patented what we think are industry leading, our patented waveguide and display engine technologies. Um, we made a few announcements already yesterday with Qualcomm in terms of the uh, XR1 chip, which we're really excited to get into our next gen products. I'll be announcing a little bit something at the end of this presentation, and then yet another announcement uh, uh, about our waveguide products uh, tomorrow morning on Thursday. So stay tuned for that one. Um, so, all this we believe. AI is coming in fast, edge computing is going to be where the industry goes, and we believe the devices can remain small. There always has to be some onboard processing, but they'll be small, we can get to fashionable form, func form factors, and we can get out to the masses that way. So, again, why aren't you all wearing your smart glasses right now? Are we all just waiting for the right one to show up, for the best one that gives us the exact uh, experience you just saw on this stage, but looks like a pair of Oakley sunglasses, what is it? Well, what I'm going to tell you is, don't waste your time and don't wait. We are the industry. We're the early adopters. Just think about all those other folks out there that aren't, right? How do we get them involved in this? And how important is it that they do? So that we know what the world really wants to do with AR. What do they really want to do? What, what's the right field of view? How much is too much? Big old field of view and I get hit by a bus. Not so good. Right? Too small of a field of view and I can't do anything with it. Or if it fades out of my view. So what's right? What's wrong? We need the world to get these devices on their heads, start using them, and get us that feedback. So how and why are they going to do that? Um, again, we talked a little bit about the holographic platform that exists that are driving these wonderful mixed AR experiences. And this stuff is so important. The money that's going into it for the software platforms, the R&D, the hardware, it's going to help us drive more cash in here to minimize things like cameras and sensors and depth sensors. It's so important, but it's not getting devices on heads right now, right? But we can, and we are, and we should be, right? So there is an experience. We can start using things, what we call AR light or AR right. Camera-based AR, AR tags, mark uh, markers. Uh, we're not talking precision 3D mapped rooms, but we're talking location-aware, sticky AR. Basic sensors, basic head tracking, AR light. Right? So, again, you saw enough of this just a second ago. I didn't know I was coming after Meta, so I was just trying to prove the point. You got the point, right? Awesome stuff. But, again, does the public even consider these devices smart glasses? Or are they really holographic platforms right now? We can debate that. But what we want to talk about here is what, what we define as AR light. So, on the, let me make sure I get it right. On the left side, you have what we would call a digital overlay. Any occluded view, occluded view device can show you an overlay. Right? It's a great piece of information, delivering a ton of value. Um, but with the aid of cameras and some sensors and some uh, external markers, you can make an AR overlay that is, again, locationally aware. That may be off a few inches left or right, but does that really make a difference for this use case? Of course not. Again, combining these two, the informational overlay intelligently with an AR overlay delivers what we call AR light. And this stuff can absolutely be experienced right here, right now, today, on fashionable ergonomic AR smart glasses. For instance, all this stuff is happening right now. Our friends at Apprentice, on the, on the, on the right side there, you see, that's AR. It's positionally aware, reading a meter, showing you what to look at. On the opposite side, I believe that's a UbiMax design. So you've got a pipeline underground. Pretty important to know where that is before you start digging holes, right? Huge value, simple stuff, overlays, a little bit of information, pulling information from the outside. It's not just enterprise, consumer, ton of value we can bring, right? This is perfect for me. I know exactly how far into the woods I hit my golf ball, 
right? And how fast and why that slice was this time 91 instead of its normal 80, right? Joking aside, walking down the street, just think of all the advertorial opportunities, the connections to your social networks with people and things and offers and all this kind of stuff. It's all real. It's all now. It's quite available, right? So take all that. Take that imagery that we know works and now add the AI engines on top of the stuff and we can really start changing lives. And this stuff, again, this is happening right now. Object Rec and OCR text speech for low vision and blind. We have some incredible videos on our websites, feel good, heart wrenching stories that you can read. Facial mood recognition for those with Asperger's, getting them out into society again, right? Making people feel comfortable. There's stuff going on for folks with autism, technology to bring them back into our society. These are wonderful things that are happening. And even on the fun side, just for playful, AR and text based experience for, for theme parks. Right? So everybody can go enjoy all the experiences that many, many of us take for granted. Right? This stuff is happening right now. There's a lot of value to it. Right? So again, when the form factor and fashion are users' number one requirement to adoption, it's got to look good and it's got to feel good. We believe for Vuesix, that comes out in its first form in the Vuesix blade. The blade edge, which you can see in our booth here at the show, try it on for yourself. We believe it's our first foray into this, and we believe it's a choice for anyone who needs fashion and form to be at the foremost. And that's not just the person who's wearing it to feel good about themselves. Quite often, it's the person on the other side of the counter, right, who's worried about what that device is you have on your head and why are you wearing it and what are you doing with it, right? But can really improve experiences. So, again, why aren't we all wearing our AR smart glasses right now? Well, let's fix that, okay? What can we do as an industry to move this forward? And I'd say this, so I, I honestly believe there's four pillars of our market, right? You've got the hardware platform, all the components, not just a, a, a pair of smart glasses or, or holographic, but all the chips and the sensors and the cameras and batteries and optics. Everybody's got to get involved to miniaturize and start making things specifically for these types of wearables, like our friends at Qualcomm had announced yesterday, right? We need immersive UI. On the software side, absolutely great money, great stuff being poured into ARKit, ARCar, V4, Unity, Wikitude, everybody's putting some money in there. Uh, we also need to, to focus on the smaller stuff. Again, running on wearable devices, the MDMs, the firmware, make sure the voice and the gesture don't just suck up battery life and create heat. They have to be designed for these types of products. Where I think we've got some opportunities here, are in the application developer community, right? We got the big guys with the big money focused on what stuff you saw up here, these big holographic, awesome, land on the moon types of AR stuff, while the small independents don't really have a market to sell these small apps that they're making because there's not enough glasses being sold. Therefore, they're forced to the phones. We need to help with that, right? We need them to focus on AR light today, on the egg glasses that are available today, to get them on the mass public's head today. So the last part of this is the money, right? It's the highest percentage of money It's going for the home runs, right? They want the next big thing, right? I know a lot of folks in the VCs, they were here in 98 when I was here in 98, right? It's not the same thing, right? I think we really need to adjust and have a little look towards the near-term profits. Support companies that are building applications for products that we can get on people's faces now. Um, and it's really important that the money gets involved here. So, Here's my challenge. I'm going to leave maybe three or two or three minutes here for some questions. Um, but honestly, my challenge to everybody out here and everybody listening and whoever's listening at home, if they are, right? The proof is the hardware's coming. I talked about Qualcomm. There's going to be some more announcements, as I said, we're going to make tomorrow. Our Blade Edge Lite and our optics are ready to rock and roll and ready to go in this type of device that you can try on for yourself. It works. It's real. It's here at the show. Come see it the software platforms. I know it's an arms race, but we're going to get there. Uh, but we can also focus on smaller things like camera-based AI, uh, AR, AI stuff like Alexa and Google Assist and all that good stuff, and focus on that edge computing. So my call to action here is to the developer community to drop your phones, pick up the smart glasses, and start developing for this community. And my bigger challenge is for the money. Honestly, you're the folks who can make this market. So don't just invest in the hardware, don't just invest in the dream, invest in the here and now, give the small smokes, folks some cash, and honestly, I think we're going to start to see a lot of growth and a lot of wearable, usable functionality on these devices. All right, we're doing our part, we're bringing out the blade, 
You'll see it here, uh, booth 507. Uh, first, Alexa enable fashionable smart glasses. Try them on for yourself. Follow us on uh, at View 6 Blade to see what we've been doing in the fashion industry for the last six months and where we're going forward with that. There's a lot of great stuff there. Uh, we also just announced the Blade Edge developer program. Well, we announced it a while ago. I'm very happy to announce today that we are shipping the Blade Edge as of June 1st. Right? So you start to get it. There's three programs, Blade Architect. These are the independents. These are the, the consumer app developers. These are the folks we want to court. Blade Edge at work is for all our enterprise and industrial folks. A lot of them already engaged with us. We're going to proliferate that more. And we have a little thing called Blade Engage. It's for everybody and anybody out there. If you have a good idea, we're going to play Matchmaker. Right? This is for people my age. This is the Match.com. For the millennials, this is your... Tinder, Grinder, whatever else you use, right? We're going to match up great ideas with developers and try to move this ecosystem forward. And honestly, we're going to be investing as Vue6 hundreds of thousands of dollars into this to drive this ecosystem, drive the independence here. I hope that some others will join us. And my challenge to everybody is invest in these app developers, get these folks with these good ideas some money, and let's pull this whole thing up from its bootstraps together. So thank you very much. I have about a minute and a half or so for questions. So anything? I'm not quite, oh, there we go. When aesthetics is so subjective, how do you plan to meet various preferences? Style, color, shape, sizes, you got it. One size doesn't fit all, right? We've got some plans. There's not much I can tell you about it, but we absolutely have view six. 100% understand. If you've ever been to a, to, a, to a sunglass hut and you've walked from, from 100 feet away, all the glasses look the same. When you put them on your face, you know instantly whether that's good or bad. That's not gonna go away here. What is the price? The price of the Blade Edge is $999. Uh, we haven't announced when, uh, when the Blade becomes a public device what that price will be, but it's under 1000 bucks right now. What interface feels the most intuitive to me? Honestly, whatever I expect it to be for whatever I'm doing right at that moment. If I'm on a mountain bike going down a hill and I need directions, I'm screaming out loud for voice. Keep my hands on those handlebars, right? If I'm in a library or on a plane, I feel I want to make sure I got a swipe pad and a button. So it really depends on what we're doing. Um, what do you think the real world consumer app would be that would drive people to wear any AR hardware whatsoever? I'll give it to you, I'll put it right down right now. Honestly, right here. $10,000 if by next AWE, someone has developed an application that I can put my blade on and I can read my notes, it's connected to my PowerPoint, and I can swipe my swipe pad and move this forward, I would pay $10,000 for that right now. But that's me, right? Who knows what else is me? You know, my mother's 75. If she could cheat at Mahjong and win, beat her friends without them knowing, she'd love that, right? Anything. It, does, it just really depends. A golfing app, or this app, it could be anything. A uh, couple more minutes here. How does this deal with prescription glasses? Great question. The blade has inserts that go inside because it has to go before the optics. You have to visit an optician that'll start online with your prescriptions. We'll get them out into the retail as soon as we can. What is the battery life? Awesome question. Batteries are the bane of the existence of any ergonomic wearable device. What we put in our glasses is as much as we can fit in, right? How long does it last? That depends on the developer community. Do you leave your camera on looking for a gesture or do you have a listener? Those are two huge, huge things. Um, yes, you can record in the stream. How will music support two-factor authentication for the enterprise? I'm getting a wrap up here. Let me get one more in here. Um, what is the latency? Is there mobile network connectivity? Absolutely, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth connected device, and I'm sure anybody else who's making devices is gonna do the same. Latency, and especially in terms of video broadcasting, all that is based more on your bandwidth. Um, so you have to be able to work with fluctuating bandwidths, uh, and we really need the folks in the telecom, the broadband, the 5G, the blade, the, 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 all the extra systems out there to work hard for these types of devices. So I've gotta wrap up here. Anything else you want to know? Last question, how heavy is it? It's 3.2 ounces, and thank everybody for your attention. Hope to see you out on the show floor tomorrow. Thanks, sir.